In this episode, we're going to look at that new level 2 charger that I got off Amazon for 217 bucks. It's a Chinese made unit and I want to see what the quality is like and I'm sure you guys do as well. So we're going to tear down the actual charger body today and see how well this one is built. Let's check it out. So first we're going to remove the rubber plugs from the base of it to reveal that there are four Phillips screws under some silicone uh, sealant. So now we'll remove the screws and the unit itself should uh, come apart relatively easy. I'm not expecting this to be uh, you know, fused together in any way. Now the screws are removed. Just have to give it a little bit of a a little bit of a pull here and the unit comes apart so that was relatively painless to open this unit up let's uh get a look at what's inside here and there it is there's the board two boards in this one controller board and a power board as you can see looks to be relatively well laid out so this is the inside of this 217 dollar uh, charger for my car as you can see nice heavy gauge wire the crimps look to be good here it's uh, got good sized screw lugs I'll make sure everything's tight yep everything is tight here so here's our power input cord Got the two line inputs and the ground over here. Got some MOV protection. Looks like this is the uh, current. This is the current sense transformer. This piece here. So that's plugged in over to here. This is how it detects how much current is being drawn. Here's our two contactors here to switch the power off. And we've got our our four output leads. So we've got our line one and line two output plus our ground and this is the pilot the control and pilot. This white wire here is what tells the unit whether it's ready to charge or not. The board itself doesn't appear to have any conformal coating but then again this is not out in the weather this is inside the garage anyway and the control board is just over here. It has its own separate power supply as you can see it has its own little inverter on it, its own MOV and um, some input choke on here, uh, 400, mi 400 volt Rubicon capacitor 10 microfarads for the power supply which looks good. Um, construction wise I can't find any fault this really looks really nice. Um, I don't I don't see any conformal coating on here but it may have. Oh, oh wait a minute yeah it does actually it feels like it's got kind of a rubberized coating on the circuit board. It's not, this is not one that's designed for being out in the weather, but there is a rubber gasket. So actually, I guess it could go out in the weather. It does have a rubber gasket right here. You see? It's got an O-ring, or I guess it's not an O-ring, it's square. But it does have a rubber gasket right there that will provide weather sealing. And the screws themselves, they were sealed in silicone on the other side. Although I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't put it out in the weather because the, the power plug itself here obviously is not waterproof. This is installed in my garage. I just wanted to take a look and see what the quality looks like on this $217 EV charger. And it looks to be it looks to be pretty good. All right, we've got uh, what do we got here? Is this an inductor? But yeah, that's our that red wires here. This is the this is the current loop. It goes into this coil here. So that's how it's measuring the current, and it's probably also measuring the voltage. Now the voltage could be actually directly measured over on this side, or it could even be doing it through this sensing coil. But um, the voltmeter doesn't appear to be perfectly accurate. It tends to jump around a bit, but uh, again, so does the one on my on my trip light uh, UPS. It jumps all over the place too. So what it says on the display 
I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't knock it for the voltage display fluctuating a bit because typically these type of controllers uh, these type of circuits what they do is they they take a sample it's a sample and hold so it um, it measures the voltage every second and it just takes a snapshot so as the AC sine wave goes up and down it will be above or below the average of 240 volts just depending on what point of the waveform it takes that sample so that's why you see the voltage fluctuating between about 230 and 250 volts because depending on where it takes that snapshot it's going to uh, have an influence on the reading whereas a, a proper meter like my fluke it's a it's a true rms meter so it actually uh, averages it out and gives you the rms reading whereas this does not but the current loop seems to be pretty accurate anyway that's a look at the inside of this thing so there's not a heck of a lot to them the pilot signal would be obviously generated on here on this chip over here on this board this is just the dumb switch that switches it on and off and there's just two relays on here to switch both the uh, both the lines off they're rated at uh, 30 amps 250 volts you can see that right there on the relays these are all sealed units and a unit like a relay like this doesn't switch under load anyway it um, it only switches when the car is not actually drawing any power uh, how it operates is the car sends a signal down through the control line it receives it receives the pilot signal which determines the maximum charging current and then it sends a signal back on the control line here to turn on to tell the rest of the controller to turn the relays on the controller turns on the relays applies power to the two output terminals the car does its charging through the onboard charger in the car once the car is finished charging, it changes the, the resistance on this wire, which then signals this to turn off the power. So once the car is charged, these go dead. Anyway, that's a look inside, because I know you guys wanted to see it, so you guys can see for yourself. Quality on this looks to be pretty good. All the nice surface mounted parts. Can't fault it for $217. I think I got a pretty good deal. Put the screws back in. And I'll go hang it back on the wall. Here's a look at the actual connector that plugs into the car. 16 amps, 120, 240 volts. It's IP54. And here's the connectors, here's the contacts on soft. They appear to be silver or silver plated. They are pretty tight. When I plug this into the car, this one's actually much stiffer to plug in than the original one. The original one, which I've had for eight years, was getting kind of loose in it's you know just the, the contacts because it had been plugged in and unplugged to the other car so much. So this one's actually quite stiff. There is a nice gasket down here as well keep moisture out because this is sitting out in the rain and this hook is metal whereas my other one was plastic and unlike my other one this one has a place where you can put a padlock through there so you can put a padlock on to stop somebody from unplugging it it's about time the uh, one that came with the car doesn't have it though well, the portable charger doesn't have it and my other the older uh, Voltec which I bought it was SPX SPX sold the uh, Voltec charger that I've had for eight years the one that the uh, the plug failed on and we're gonna do a teardown on that and depot it and uh, see what actually failed in it in a future video that I'll probably do this weekend anyway I wanted you guys to see this thing inside and out I'm not gonna open this particular part portion because this is what's out in the rain and this is um, you know this one's sealed Plastic. This is all plastic here. Plastic, uh, but this is metal. But this is all going to be sealed up anyway internally. Nice strain relief. Nice heavy cable. I like it, and say so I'm able to uh, charge it uh, 3.8, 3.9 kilowatts. So this actually does charge 
at a higher rate than my other one, which was only 3.6. And I, I noticed that my car does charge a little quicker with this one. This is 16 amps. The one it replaced was 15 amps. And I do get more power from it. When I plug my old volt into this, my original volt only has a 3.3 kilowatt charger. And the display on here only goes up to 3.3 kilowatts. When I plug the new volt in, it goes up to 4 kilowatts and it does charge up faster, about 30 minutes faster on this one than it did on the original one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.